Hello world, Shelly here, and today it's time for your Friday Foundation Fix, where you can get your fix of foundation reviews in between foundation fests. And today I've got a request from you guys. It is a natural, vegan, cruelty-free foundation from Eden Minerals. And I actually picked this up in two different shades. And this is a mineral-based foundation. It retails for $28. You get one fluid ounce of product and it is described as a full coverage formula with immediate and long-term effect based on a formula enriched with minerals and therefore protects skin while it's beautiful and smooth. Dermatologist tested, developed for all skin types, even the most sensitive, and it comes in nine shades. Now, that's not a terribly great shade range. This is a product out of Stockholm, and the Shades are kind of hard to figure out. They all have names and, for example, I've got Saga and Disa. I'm not sure if I am saying them correctly. Some of them look even more difficult to pronounce. But the thing with the shades is that they're not listed in order of lightness to darkness on the website. And the other issue I had was that the product photos, the, the photo of the product in the bottle is not accurate. This color looks significantly lighter on the screen. This is the shade Disa than it does in person. Like this is gonna be maybe too dark for me when I'm self tanning even. I was, I was trying to get two of the lighter shades. This one's described as light. This one's described as light to medium. So that description is correct, but don't rely on the pictures of the glass bottles on the website. You can, however, look at the photos of, they don't have swatches, but they do have like the, the drip of wet foundation photoed, and those appear accurate based on what these look like in the bottle. So I would go by that. It's kind of hard to figure out, but we'll see what works. I am not self tanning right now, so I'm thinking this might work for my Casper the Friendly Ghost coloring. It's a little bit uh, neutral to yellow undertoned. They claim it's neutral. It looks a little bit yellow to me, but we'll swatch them all and see how it goes. I think I'm going to go with the lighter one today. And let's take a look at the Eden Minerals Nordic Veil swatched against some of the other foundations in my collection. Alrighty, let's swatch. First up is today's foundation, the Eden Minerals Nordic Veil. The first shade I have is in Saga, number 303. And the second shade is Disa, number 307. Wow, is it darker. Holy cow, I don't even think that's my self-tanner color. Third up, I've got the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place in their lightest shade, 1C0 Shell. I would say it's about the same lightness as the Saga shade in the Eden Minerals, but a little bit cooler. Fourth up is the Urban Decay All Nighter Foundation in shade 1.5. And last, I've got the Kat Von D Locket Foundation in Light 44 Cool, which I would say is also maybe a smidge darker than the Eden Minerals in Saga, but also quite cool tone. So the Eden Minerals definitely comes off as a neutral compared to the cool tone swatches here. I am starting out with a 43 year old face. I've got some texture and sunspots from sun damage, particularly on the driving side of my face that I like to cover up. I do have larger pores around my nose and my cheeks and some texture and pores in the center of my forehead. My smile lines and my forehead lines like to collect foundation. So those are the issues that I am typically trying to cover up with foundation. My skin is typically dry. I've been more toward normal lately, but today I am dry. I did an e.l.f. Pore Refining Primer Mask this morning, and first impression, I don't think it refined my pores, and I think it dried my skin the heck out. So I have cleansed, moisturized, and sunscreened already. I have primed with the Strivectin Lime Blur Fector Primer, but I do feel my skin is starting out on the dry end of the spectrum today. So that is where we are beginning. For the Eden Minerals Nordic Veil, we have a beautiful packaging glass bottle, very cute apple. There's apple extract in here and other things that are good for your skin. The packaging is really, really nice and you get a pump. Yay. I enjoy having a pump on my foundation. 
let's check out the consistency of this guy. I am going to go with Saga, the lighter shade. This is number 303 because the other one is just going to be way too dark for me. So there's like one and a half pumps. This is a pretty thick formula. On the Eden Minerals website, they recommend using a sponge to apply this. I am going to try both ways, a sponge and a brush. This is my Real Techniques Miracle Complexion sponge. The cats are at it again. My Eco Tools Total Perfecting Blenders, I can only find one of them, and I've got at least four of them. The cats have been stealing my sponges. On the other side, I will use my e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush. Love this brush. We'll see if I have a preference. We'll see if it's better coverage or better application one way or the other. Oh, this is very thick and creamy. Can you guys see that? How do I get it to focus on my hand? There we go. say we are at a medium coverage with one pass and the sponge which is a lot of coverage with one pass and the sponge it is a demi matte sort of a finish it's a little bit tough to blend out because it is so thick but once you blend it out it does not look heavy it really is a lightweight finish Let's see how the brush side goes. I think the sponge is gonna be the way to go with this one. I'm getting some kind of heavy cakey areas with the brush because it's just not shearing out that thick formula well enough. Let me go in with the sponge and see if we can kind of fix this. Got a little bit of product left. Let me just see if it builds up. They did call this full coverage, so let's just try a little more in the center. I feel like this does build, but it starts to look heavy really quickly. In some spots, it is just a little bit cakey. It's kind of my trouble spots, like in between my eyebrows. The side of my nose here is looking like the makeup is just kind of sitting on top of my skin. It's blurring texture nicely, but I do feel like I can still see all of my pores and I feel like I've got a little bit of redness poking through on my chin and where my glasses sit on my nose that it's just not quite, I think it's, it's not that the coverage isn't there, I think that the coverage is just a little bit patchy. Just kind of having trouble getting product to stay in some places like my left nostril does not want to hold product it just looks like there's nothing there where the right side looks like there's too much product there it's just kind of an uneven cover and see now i just i just rubbed off product so i have a bare spot on my nose this seems to move around a bit it is not completely drying down it's kind of still tacky so i am probably yeah i got a little transfer probably gonna set this with a powder which makes me a little bit nervous because it's kind of looking a little dry to begin with but that is where we are at right now and right now what time is it 
right now it is 1 35 p.m so that it will be our check-in time i am going to go put the rest of my face on and i'll be right back Alrighty, let's see where we're at i think the color match of this foundation is pretty good I had no trouble blending powder products on top of it, although I did have a little bit of trouble with my concealer and I can kind of see the seam where the concealer meets the foundation. It just didn't want to blend out and it got a little bit cakey on those points. I feel like overall, it just looks a little bit dry, kind of flat, kind of dry. In areas, it's looking a little bit heavy, like it's a little cakey along this whole side of my nose. It's a little cakey between my eyebrows. It's cakey along my chin and around my mouth. It also did immediately settle into my smile lines and my forehead lines. So I wasn't going to set it with a powder because it was looking dry, but then it kept settling into those lines. But that gave me an opportunity to try out a powder that I had purchased. And because I was self tanning, wasn't able to try it because I got it in the shade Fair. It is the Charlotte Tilbury, Tilbury, airbrush flawless finish powder and oh my god you guys this is totally smoothing really really made this look a lot nicer because this did look a little bit textured my pores are still visible i'm not in love with this foundation at this point i am hoping that as i wear it it'll kind of warm up to my skin and settle in a bit now of course i could try setting sprays things like that and those are the kinds of things that i will try with this foundation in future times that i wear it and that's the whole reason i want to do a foundation follow-up series because i don't want to try all those things i want to see how the foundation performs pretty much on its own in the normal circumstances that I would wear foundation, which is primer, typically set it with powder. So I don't wanna bring in all kinds of other things at this point. If I do get this to work better with a setting spray, then I will definitely include that in a future foundation follow-up. But right now I think it looks nice at a conversational distance. I think up close it looks pretty dry. It also feels a little bit dry now, like I said. I was feeling a little bit dry starting out, but I have dry skin normally anyway, so it's if it feels dry right off the bat, it's probably a drying formula on me, and if you're anywhere in the dry skin range, that might not be something that you can tolerate. So, But let's not judge it too soon. These are just my impressions at this point. I'm going to wear it for a while. I'm going to wear it all day, actually. I'll be back in a few hours with a daylight check-in, then I'll come back at the end of the night, give you my final thoughts. Let me tell you guys what else is on my face. My eyes are the Too Faced Chocolate Gold palette. My lip is Bare Minerals. This is the shade XYZ. It's the matte. And I've got two, two, no. Total Temptation from Maybelline. My bronzer is the True Match Lumi Bronzer in Light. This is the repackaging of the old Glam Bronze from L'Oreal. Blush is Milani Color Harmony. This is the Plums. And my highlight is the Maybelline Master Chrome Face Studio in Molten Rose Quartz. Rose Quartz, Rose Gold. I'm totally getting everything wrong right now. There you have it. I'll be back in a bit. We'll do a daylight check-in. Hey guys, daylight check-in here. It's about 7 p.m. So that puts us at, oh, the five and a half hour-ish mark. I am so glad that it is staying lighter out later now. Here is a daylight color match of this foundation. And the color match I think is fine. I did just get a good close-up look in the mirror and I think at a conversational distance this has a very nice pretty sort of powder matte finish but up close I think it looks dry. It still feels dry and I feel like it accentuates like my smile lines because it's sort of that just that dry look where it's not smoothing them over so it's like you can kind of see them more. I don't know if I'm explaining this very well, but I do feel like my forehead lines and my smile lines are a bit accentuated, but color match, let's see if I can get my arms in here, I think is pretty good. And overall, it settled down into my skin a little bit better, but I'm still not a huge fan. And it is like I'm feeling, I wish I could take my makeup off right now, I won't. I will stick it out for you guys, but it just feels a little dry. 
So that's where we're at at 7 p.m. I will be back in a few hours with my final thoughts. Okay, it's 9.48 p.m. Yes, I placed another Sephora VIB Rouge order. The sale will be over by the time you see this, but... Oh, you guys, it hurts. Make it stop. Make it stop. All the Kat Von D brow stuff launched. I just can't. I just, I... No self-control whatsoever. So... How did the Eden Minerals Nordic Veil hold up? So, there's some good news and some unchanged news, if that makes any sense. It feels drying. It's, it's just, I want to wash my face. My whole face feels tight and itchy, and I can just see dry drag lines without even moving my face. It's just drying on me. I... Like I said, I had drier skin to start out with this morning, so if you've got dry skin, this is probably not going to work out very well. On the bright side, the issues I was having with it looking kind of cakey and heavy, it did sort of melt into my skin. Can you tell there's even a little bit of luminosity on my forehead? Like, it doesn't feel oily, but it, it doesn't look as powder dry as it did, but it took several hours for that to happen. So... In terms of the finish, at a conversational distance, I do still think it looks really pretty. Even at this 9 hour, 8 hour, 139, 38 hour mark that we're at right now. I don't think it wears away too much, because even my chin, there's a little redness starting to peek through, but not bad. If I don't touch my face, it's fine, but it transfers really easily. You can see a lot of marks on my nose because I have allergies going on. Whenever I'm wearing foundation, okay, we're, this is gonna be TMI, so like, plug your ears, yeah. ear muffs, la 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 la. If I have to, if I have a runny nose, I just stick tissue up my nostril and do it that way so that I don't have to actually touch my face. But you know, to do that, you still have to touch your nose. So the spots where I've touched, and that's all I do, I don't rub, I don't smear, I don't wipe Kleenex, it's just my finger touching my nose. You can see where that has happened a few times. So that's a thing. It's not transfer resistant. In fact, it's it's likely to transfer. I hugged a person today and I saw that I left a little bit of foundation on her shoulder. That sucks. So not really transfer resistant. It did continue to settle into lines. It's basically settled into all my lines. So if I had to give the Eden Minerals Nordic Veil Foundation a grade specifically for maturing dry skin, what would I give it? I'm gonna go D+. Here's the deal. It's nice looking from a conversational distance, but it's not exceptionally comfortable to wear. It feels drying from minute one. It is very lightweight, but it doesn't feel great. I don't like that it transfers as easily as it does. It's settling into lines constantly. That does not work very well for maturing skin. It doesn't do much to blur texture at all. In fact, in some cases it enhances texture. Doesn't do much to blur pores, but it does still look pretty at a conversational distance, so I'm not going to put it into the F range. I'm going to give it a D plus, and that's where we're at. The shade range only has nine shades, so it's not a very extensive shade range. There are just too many things that are putting it below average, in my opinion. Now, don't forget, this is specifically for dry skin and maturing skin. If you've got combo to oily skin, this actually might be a really nice foundation if you like that powder matte finish, because it is really pretty at a conversational distance. But for maturing skin and dry skin, it's a tough sell. They do have very fair end of the spectrum shades, so if you are fair, that might be a consideration to, to check out. But that's how it worked for me. So we're gonna go D plus on the Eden Minerals and that's where we're at. 
If you would like to see more foundation reviews or you enjoyed this one, please give me a thumbs up down below. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern time, and foundation reviews are on Fridays. You can always go on my website, geekoutofwater.com, click the Foundation Fest link. That will take you to a ranked, sortable, searchable spreadsheet of all my foundation re reviews, of which there are more than 80 of them up there now. And do scroll the table. So if you're on a mobile device, you can swipe it over. If you have a like a Mac, Apple Magic Mouse, you can swipe. It's a little tougher to swipe if you're on a desktop computer and you don't and you just have a regular mouse, although a scroll bar should show up at the bottom of the table. But if you just look at what you can see, you're only seeing the first few columns. There's a ton of data if you just swipe that thing over. And all the data at the top right, there's a search box so you can search things like hydrating, drying, blurred, smoothed for pores and texture, cruelty-free, SPF, vegan, lots of words. Someday I will put all the words up there, but I've got suggestions at the top that instruct you on kind of the words that I use to get you results when you are searching through the foundation. So please check that out if you haven't already. Give me a week or so to get the results from this one up there because I don't want to put it up before the video goes up spoil everything you yeah, know so it'll be up there within a week or so and there you have it thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me i appreciate it and i hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world take care of each other bye bye